Hello, my friends. This is the art of prepping. Hope everyone is doing well today. So, why should we prepare? And in particular, if you've already started to get prepared, why should you continue to get more prepared? So, I get this question a lot, and I've been talking to some friends. Uh, believe it or not, though, some of my friends are not really into preparedness. Most of them are, but even getting various messages uh, from uh, the online community here, uh, a lot of questions about, you know, about motivation, about being consistent, about how do you find resources to do this on a regular basis? How do you incorporate preparedness into your lifestyle and all this? And yes, there's a lot to think about, a lot of planning that has to go in, into effect. Uh, but I just have some simple, simple reasoning behind preparing here in the modern day. I'm just taking some examples that are going on right now. And there's so many more, but let's just look at what's just going on right now. So we have inflation, right? It doesn't seem like it's going anywhere soon. It just continues to be a problem. So if you buy things now, you can get it cheaper and you can probably get a lot more of it than if you wait later. Just a real simple concept. Vaccine mandates. Regardless of what you think of those mandates, they do have implications. There's going to be a lot of people that will walk. They're not going to do a job if they have to get jabbed. And what has been shown over the last couple of days is that the government estimates of the population that has been jabbed has been vastly, vastly exaggerated. So an exaggeration of those numbers, I mean, it's not that surprising, right? The government lies all the time and the government is not very efficient. The government is just really, the government is not really a, a source that you would want to trust, you know? Uh, so, you know, surprise, surprise, the jab numbers are really not as high as they're saying. So there's a lot of people, maybe not the majority, but close to, Close to half may actually be not jabbed. They're saying no. So what could happen if it's just something that the government pushes and it goes through and that businesses comply? You're going to probably have mass unemployment, a lot of job losses. It'll probably take not much time at all, weeks or months for the whole economy to slide into a recession or worse. And what's going to happen after that? Supply chain crisis possible collapse in some various industries. And so this alone is quite concerning and very possible. And then we have all the rhetoric around the world about conflicts and wars. A lot of tension. You know, if you pay attention to international news, there's a lot of tension out there. And then, of course, we've been having some rather, I don't know if I would go so far to say bizarre weather. But it's a little bit outside the norm, not completely unheard of. I mean, we have seen some of this in the past, but it's a little bit out of the norm to have some areas of the country so warm and then some so cold. And the same thing for other parts of the world. Some places are way colder than normal and have a lot more snow and ice than normal. And then some places are really warm or if not hot when they're not supposed to be. So what is all this? Is this global warming? No, I don't think so. But what I can say is that there's a lot of a lot of information pointing toward the grand solar minimum. So it's the sun. A lot of this probably has to do with the sun. Now, you can't rule out weather manipulation, right? Governments for a long period of time now have had the tools and they have them now to manipulate the weather. So it could be some government tinkering, right, with the weather. Who knows what's going on? But what I can say is that the sun is going into a hibernation phase and it can have a lot of implications for our weather, including also there's a lot of possibilities that it can also trigger earthquakes and volcanoes and so forth. And so the heavy hand of government and their response to the so-called pandemic and the so-called climate change is not beneficial 
And they're, they're compounding the problems that we have. And some people believe it's on purpose, though. They, they compound them just to make them worse. But if you think the government is going to save you, that the government's going to be there when you're in a time of need, you don't have to look that far back. Look, look at the past few natural disasters, and you see that FEMA doesn't even show up sometimes for days or weeks later after the, the crisis. You see that Red Cross is overwhelmed within the first couple of days. You see that the government isn't there to save you. So you're going to have to save yourself. So whatever you have to do to get motivated, do it. You need to prepare because the future is really, really up in the air. We don't know how bad things could be. Things could get very, very bad and it could happen so fast too. You guys take care. Catch you later.